what you're looking at is some super, super fine gold. And I'll put this into perspective for you. There's the tip of my finger. So we're looking at some extremely small gold. What I'm going to show you today is how you can very easily and very cheaply modify your standard sluice, which will enable you to catch this super, super fine gold. This gold has gone through a 100 mesh screen. And I'll put this into perspective for you. There's the tip of my finger. That just shows you how small this gold is. I'll zoom out. And that's the size of the pan. So we're looking at some extremely small gold. Right now it's sitting all over the pan. So from this distance it's hard to see. But if I do the old tap tap, then be able to appreciate as you can see it's all now walking together just how much there is this super fine gold is the product of some experimentation that I've been conducting over the last few weeks gold this small generally will not be caught in a standard sluice setup I've worked out a way that I can modify my sluice box to catch gold even this fine. The question of course is, how did I catch it? And the answer is this. So what I'm gonna show you today is how you can very easily and very cheaply modify your standard sluice into a vibration bed and an extremely effective one at that, which will enable you to catch ridiculously fine gold. These four buckets here are tailings. These tailings are all minus 30 mesh. And I got some outstanding results. I'll show you a photo. Some pretty good results. And as good as they were, I know that there's still fine gold in this material. Now, my setup that I used was a conventional sluice. It was a good setup. And what you saw in that picture is everything that it caught. But this being super fine material, means that there's still going to be some super, super fine mustard type gold still sitting in this material. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a scoop of this material, I'm going to put it in a pan, and I'm going to show you what's still in it. A random scoop in the pan. Let's go and have a look at it. Okay, I've managed to isolate most of it right up the top of the pan. Okay, I've bunched it up and there it is there. Now obviously we're not talking about huge amounts of gold here, but it just goes to show you that's just one scoop and there's real fine mustard gold still on this material. So that got me thinking. Here's my keen sluice box and even though this sluice box is a great sluice box, it still wasn't able to catch that real fine mustard stuff. Still some gold was getting through, and that's because this thing's not built to catch extremely fine mustard gold. That material needs to be treated differently. So I thought, I need to modify it. And this is what I came up with. This here is a concrete vibrator. 70 bucks off eBay. And obviously runs off 240 volts. If I want to catch super fine gold, I mean all the gold that was missed, there's a few things that I need to adjust. Firstly, I need to decrease the angle of the box. Secondly, I need to decrease the amount of water. Thirdly, the speed of water. And fourth, I need to introduce a completely new dynamic. 
and that's where the concrete vibrator comes in. And I've had the opportunity to watch a few professional sapphires run their pay dirt through massive wet plants. And one of the things that they use is they use what's called a vibration bed. And essentially, what I've done here is the same concept. The vibration bed on a sapphire plant causes movement of the bed which the sapphire wash goes over and causes all that heavy stuff, i.e. sapphires, to go straight to the bottom and all the lighter material continues over. Now this is obviously assisted by water as well. So I thought why not incorporate something like that to my standard sluice. So that's what I've done. Now right now I'm just in the experimental stages, but I can tell you I've already done two test runs and I'm extremely pleased with the results. I need to reduce the amount of water. Now, this little setup here is the same bilge pump that I used on my video, how to get fine gold out of crushings using limited water. And it's a very small pump, which means automatically for a sluice this size, I'm not getting the normal amount of water that I would in a conventional setup. So right there, I've got the reduced amount of water that I need. And of course, assisted by this regulator which I can adjust if needed. Now going on to the angle of the box. The angle of the box normally when I have my sluice box set up for a conventional run as I did when I originally ran this material here I had it sitting probably further up there like around about another good inch higher at the head. I generally run my sluice boxes anywhere between sort of one in eight to one in six. And from experience, I've found that seems to give me the best results. And judging from those earlier pictures, I did. I got great results. However, I need to reduce the angle of the box for this setup because I want the water to tarry in this box. And the reason why I want it to tarry is I want to give this little device time to do its job, which is by vibrating, we're causing an incredible amount of now introduced additional displacement. So now having less water and less angle, the water is now gonna move slower than it normally would, which in conjunction with the vibrator causes that super fine gold to get trapped. Now the angle of the box I've got here, I've just written it on the side of the box, I measured it, is 11 to one. So for every 11 inches forward, the box drops one inch down. The vibrator is sitting on the plate which actually came with it, which is used to smooth out your concrete. And I thought that's a great bit of kit to serve as a mounting plate. So what I did is I just ground down the corners, cut them away, folded them over either side, and they now become the brace where I can attach it to the sluice. Drilled a couple of holes, on both sides. Point to note though, it was fairly flimsy. So I realized that if I want optimum transfer, I need to brace it up a bit. So I put this little wooden frame on it and now it's nice and rigid and sturdy, which means I'm getting full transfer of vibration onto the sluice box. Now I was thinking about putting it up here, putting it down here, but I thought, you know what? I'll put it right in the center so the whole box can get the effect of the vibrations and the couple of test runs that I've done it's worked beautifully so having worked out how to secure the concrete vibrator to the sluice box my next problem was how am I going to get the sluice box to not walk and this was my fix so normally what I do is I'll put the end of the sluice box on a block of wood like this and another block of wood up the top but this time I put a thinner one here because I needed to reduce the angle so all I simply did is I got this piece of timber here and I got a couple of clamps on either side and to hold the actual box on the piece of timber I just put a G clamp in the center of it. So what this does is it stops this timber moving and it stops the box moving at the front. So I thought okay I won't get any backwards forwards movement anymore but I thought what about sideways movement? And my fix for that was, is I simply got my drill and I drilled a hole through these two bits of timber down through the bath and simply just dropped a bolt into the hole like so. And of course I did the same on the other side. 
So I thought, how am I actually going to stop the sluice box moving from side to side? So what I did is I simply drilled another hole there, got a long screw with a couple of nuts, and just drop it in the hole. Same on the other side, and that now stops any sideways movement. So now the sluice box is secure, so it can vibrate as much as it wants, and it's not going to move. The final thing I did was, is I needed to adjust the levels and to get the right level, I just used my spirit level here and there it is sitting between two lines. So even left and right at the end, right there where the bucket is, slightly off to the left from the way I'm looking at it now. However, it's between the lines, so I'm happy with that. So she's pretty well good to go now, and I've got those four buckets over there waiting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run just one bucket through and show you guys how this thing works. At the end of that, we're going to process what's caught in the sluice and what's caught in the bucket separately. I want to be able to determine whether or not this setup is working. And the best way to do that is to pan this to see how much gold gets through. One thing I should also add before we get going, this being a 240 volt device, I have my generator set up and the bilge pump being a 12 volt device will run off my auxiliary battery via this Anderson plug. Okay, so I've got the water going now. Here she is going into the bucket, coming out at the head of the sluice. A slight adjustment just to get it into the center. She's pretty well good to go. I'll now go and turn on the generator. So there's our empty bucket. We've switched her off and this is what she looks like now. And you can see there's a build up of material in and around each riffle. Interestingly enough, this is hard packed. All through here it's hard packed. At first I was wondering about that, but it doesn't really concern me. If you've ever carried a bucket of dirt home uh, from the bush in your car, you've traveled a hundred kilometers or so, you'll find that when you get home, what's in that bucket is gonna be hard packed. And that's exactly what's happened here. Because of the vibrations, the material has become hard packed and that gold has gone right down into the bottom of it. So we're gonna find out now just how much gold ended up down in this tailings bucket. So this is a tailings bucket and it's just on half a bucket of actual tailings. I've got a tub set up and a pan ready to go and see if there was any gold that got through. Now considering what we saw out of that one scoop, if this isn't working then there should be lots and lots of little dust. But we don't want to see any. And that will indicate that she's working. I can see a couple of little specks. I don't know if you can see them. That's all that got through. I'll now do the second pan out of the tailings bucket and we'll see what the result is. We'll reduce this second pan down and we'll see what we get. And I can see one or two little specks there. Nothing right home about. So I'm really happy with that. So one full bucket of material around about five, six specks of gold got through. So she's working and she's working well. So now, we're gonna clean this out and we'll see how much fine gold we actually caught. Now, bear in mind this dirt's already been through a sluice, a conventional setup, which is why I put this setup together because I wanna catch the fine gold that escaped the conventional setup and is still in those buckets. And I reckon this could be a good fix. We're about to find out. Okay, so this is the material out of the sluice, around about half an inch of material on the bottom of the bucket. I'm gonna pan it off and see how much gold we caught. Righty, -o. let's have a look. 
but there you go we can see it if you have a look at the top of the pan you can see a tail right across the top of the pan which would indicate that we've caught some extremely fine golden deed if i'm going to do this properly i need to be super super meticulous because i really do want to get a true picture of how much fine gold we got out of that one bucket so what i did is i took all the material and then two handfuls at a time whacked it into a pan and meticulously panned it off and i've now reduced it to that so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to tip this into a pan and this will give us a true picture of just how much fine gold was in that one bucket of material. Very, very cloudy material. So much fine silt in it. And of course, a lot of fine gold. Right, looks pretty good. So now, we're going to get a true picture of what was in that bucket. Let's have a look. Look at that line of colour coming up on the top of the pan now. Goodness gracious me. So much fine gold. Have a go at that. And it's all through this material. You can just see it. It's just like dust. Check that out there. Righty, I'll bunch it up again. Just with my fingers. I'll tap tap. Yeah, there it is walking together now. Look at that there. Just an incredible amount of dust. And the old tap tap just brings it together. And you can see a definite cluster of fine gold there. There you go. Check that out. How fine is that gold? Just super, super fine. And bearing in mind that this was material that had already gone through a conventional setup. So I'm actually super stoked. Incorporating a concrete vibrator onto a standard sluice, reducing the level, reducing the water flow, and the speed of water seems to work quite well. And this is really only my first run through. So I'm pretty sure that if I tweaked it, I'd get even better results. That is just ridiculously fine gold. Super, super fine mustard gold. And it just goes to show how gold like this can get through a conventional sluice setup. So I'm super, super stoked that I've come up with a way, a fairly simple way too, that I can recycle my tailings and catch this otherwise unattainable gold. Yeah, it might not represent much in weight, but, you know, it's an experiment. I'm always experimenting, always trying to work out new ways to catch gold. And I'm just really, really happy that this has actually worked as well as it has. So can't wait to put these other three buckets through and see what our total show of colour will be. Righto, fast forward three buckets later, through the wet plant, clean out, pan off the cons, and with the help of a blue bowl, this is what we got. Now this includes the first bucket. This is the total amount. Now, it doesn't really look like that much, but when we put it in a pan, that's actually gonna look pretty good. So knowing just how fine this gold is, and knowing what to expect, I'm gonna put a couple of drops in this pan of good quality dishwashing detergent that'll serve to break the surface tension of the water so we'll now tip in the little bottle and you can see the color there and i haven't even got it together yet just so much fine color rightio virtually the whole bottom of the pan's painted it's like someone's got a a paintbrush dipped it into a can of gold paint and just painted the bottom of the pan and <laughs> it is so fine it just doesn't want to move off the bottom of that pan so the old tap tap here we go good old tap tap gets it all together again 
and just have a go at that. My word. Have a go at that fine gold. Now, that is all gold that I missed when I did my first sluicing of the fine minus 30 mesh material. And I put those four buckets aside, suspecting there was a lot of fine gold that I missed. And I tell you what, I wasn't wrong. Have a go at that. That's a lot of fine gold. And I'm tipping if I weighed that, I'd probably be getting at least two grams, maybe three grams of gold that I otherwise would not have got. So now you know the process that I went through to end up with this. And over here in this tub is some already pre-mixed super fine crushing. This material in this tub was eight to 30 mesh. And I then put that aside onto tarps, re-dried it. And this is now the result of re-crushing it. That material went through the RC1 four or five times and is effectively being ground down to 100 mesh, 200 mesh. So super, super fine material. I haven't changed the angle of the box. The angle of the box is still 11 to one. You may have noticed, however, in the trial stage, that this corner here was fairly loose. So what I've done is I've put some larger fasteners in place. So that is now very, very firm. Now that's important because that now means that I'm gonna get 100% transference of vibration from the concrete vibrator to the sluice box. So it's gonna work even more effectively. The other main thing through trial and error is I believe the water was still slightly too fast. So what I've done now is I've closed this regulator valve a little bit more. And that's because I wanna reduce the flow of water. I wanna slow the water down. I want it to stay in the box even longer than before which just gives more time for those vibrations and that now introduced displacement to do its work in conjunction with specific gravity. And as previously, during my testing, I have a bucket at the end to catch the tailings. And that's there for one reason and one reason only. So I can do a quick test pan of what ends up in that bucket to see whether or not we're missing gold. And hopefully, now that I've made these few slight adjustments and repairs, it should be very very minimal if anything negligible so we're ready to go we're going to start her up we're going to put this material through Okay, so I put one bucket through, and now we're gonna quickly check a few scoops of these tailings here to see whether or not any gold got through. Once I've done that, I'll do a quick clean up of this sluice here, put it into a tub, and I'll give you a sneak preview of what we caught, and then we'll crack on, if I'm happy with everything, with the rest of that dirt. So here we have our bucket of tailings. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get one scoop of this, put it into that pan, and I'm gonna see if there's any color. But as a comparison, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this pan here. This is the stuff we're putting through the sluice. And I'm gonna grab one scoop of it right now. And I'm gonna put it in the pan. And we're gonna see how much color is in this material that hasn't even hit the sluice yet. And the reason why I wanna do this, because this will give me a really good idea of what's getting through this setup. So let's go do that now. One scoop of tailings, one scoop of material before it hits the sluice. Now gonna pan both these off and let's look at the difference and see if any gold's getting through into the tailings. So this is our material before it hits the sluice. And this is just a very quick pan off just to see per scoop how much we can expect. You can see the colour coming up, a fair bit of colour.
So that's what we can expect for one scoop of material. So now, let's quickly pan off the tailings. Now we don't want the same result. In fact, we virtually want no gold in this. And we'll now do the twirl. Let's see what we've got. Heck, I can't even see dust in that. Oh, look, probably one, one tiny little micron speck in there. So that's just brilliant. For one scoop of material that came out of the tailings, we've virtually got no gold. So she's working and she's working beautifully. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly clean the box out. I'll give you a sneak peek. And then from there, we'll put the rest of the material through. So here now is the clean up from that one bucket load that I put through. So basically, Around about an inch on the bottom of this bucket is the cons that we're left with. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek at what we can expect. So one scoop of it into this pan. Let's have a look-see. And considering what we saw come out of one scoop of pre-sluiced material, we should have some pretty nice colour in this. What have we got? And yeah, we got some nice color coming up there. Let's bunch him up together. And we got some nice color coming up there. And that's just a sneak peek of what we can expect when we pan out these cons and the cons from the remainder of dirt that's yet to go through our new improvised vibration bed. So after our first bucket, which we tested, we've now managed to empty the red tub. We've got one final bucket of material to go through. We're gonna whack it through now, and then we'll be able to do the final cleanup. So a quick pan off from the tailings, straight out of the tailings bucket, grab one scoop in the pan, and we do not want to see any gold on this, let's go. Okay. And look at that. Not even a skerrick of color. Oh, that is brilliant. Give it a tap tap, give it the benefit of the doubt. And I am not seeing a single color, which is absolutely fantastic. That means my now modified sluice into a vibration bed is working perfectly. So here's the result, half a bucket of cons from all that material. And now I'm gonna do something that's really gonna put this set up to the test. I'm now gonna run this half a bucket of cons back through, and we're gonna see just how well it works. We'll put it through, and then we'll do a quick test pan of what comes out, 
And if there's zero gold in that, then not only have we now reduced the amount of cons, but we've also proven that this is an extremely effective vibration bed. So this now will be the ultimate test to see whether or not the tailings of the cons are still holding gold. Now let's see if there's any gold in it. See if there's any color in here. Oh, there is nothing. I can't even see a single speck. That is awesome. That's better than I thought. You know, I wasn't going to put the cons through, but I thought it's the ultimate test to see whether or not it's going to catch all the gold from concentrates, and it has. So I am super, super stoked. This just proves how good this simple modification can be on a standard sluice box. Let's now go and do the pan off. Done the clean out and this is now the cons of the cons. So it's time now to head up, whack it in the blue bowl and let's see what we got. So what I've done now is I've come up and I've started panning off the cons and I'm gonna do that as you can see with the assistance of the blue bowl. So what I've just run through here now is the minus 100 mesh material so i classified it out and just have a go at the color around this rim that is insane super super fine material so now i'm going to go on to the minus 30 mesh and this is the minus 30 plus 100 mesh material having now just gone through the blue bowl and we've got some really really nice color there so what we're going to do is we're going to put it all together clean it up get rid of all the black sand and iron filings and we'll see how much we've got some really really nice gold there and super Super fine stuff. Just so fine. Got to be happy with that. So here now is the result of our final pan off. That being the result of those five or six buckets of recrushed material put through the vibration bed. And we're going to weigh it up now. And we're going to see what it came to. So remember, this is more gold I was able to recover from that already previously crushed material. And that comes to 6.13 grams. So that's another 6.13 grams I was able to recover out of that previously crushed material and then re-crushed again 
but now put through a vibration bead, which enabled me to capture that super, super fine gold. And not forgetting, back in the experimental stage, I even put the originally fine crushed material through again without recrushing it and was able to recover more gold simply because the vibration bed can catch that super, super fine stuff. So I'm really, really happy with this result. That's another six grams I was able to recover using this method. A very, very effective method and cheap, very easy to make. Thanks for watching.